Hey guys, Jaime here, and if you're new to the channel, welcome. Now, this video is going to be really, really juicy because e-commerce and local business, they are going to be going head to head. I'm going to be measuring them up against each other. And by the end of this presentation, we are finally going to be answering the question, should you do local business or should you do e-commerce for your social media marketing agency? I am honestly so excited for this because I know a lot of people out there, maybe you are trying to start your social media marketing agency and you're not really sure what niche to pick or really what route to take, whether it's e-commerce or local business. And in this video, I'm finally going to be clearing a lot of things up for a lot of you. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, in this presentation, I will cover number one, the difference between the two. And the final thing is which one comes out on top. Okay. Here is what we are going to cover. Number one is outreach. So which businesses are easier to sign from an outreach perspective? Number two is service delivery. It's a harder to get results for e-commerce clients. Many people in the space often say that it's harder to get results for e-commerce clients. I am going to be covering that and I'm going to be revealing the truth from someone whose agency actually runs ads for multi-million dollar clients in the e-commerce space. And the final thing from a selfish perspective, which one will provide, uh, provide a better lifestyle? So. First and first is outreach. Now, the first thing that you need to understand uh, when it comes to e-commerce is that it's a worldwide economy. There are no geograph uh, geographical limitations and e-commerce business owners are completely fine with that because that's how they operate their business too. They are completely fine working with someone in the US if they're based out in the UK or from someone in Germany or from someone in, in Spain, France, Italy, wherever it is, because they, they're just used to that, right? In fact, their business operates like that. The second thing is more effective. The common outreach methods that people use are way more effective on e-commerce clients Due to, the, uh, due to the nature of their business, which is online, right? Social media messaging, emails, LinkedIn, Loom video, et cetera, et cetera. They're gonna land better because they spend their day online. And so when, when doing outreach, we have to ask uh, ourselves, what does the typical day of uh, my ideal prospect look like? Where, where, where are they hanging out? What things are they passionate about? What are some of the software they use, et cetera, et cetera. And so where are they hanging out? Most likely online, right? Most likely on places like LinkedIn, social media, emails. And the reason why that is, is simply because their nature of their business is online, right? Whereas someone who is, for example, running the restaurant every single, you know, day in and day out, uh, most of the time is spent in the actual restaurant, taking care of, uh, of uh, clients, et cetera, et cetera. So that is the second thing. And the final thing is they are used to it. By now, the vast majority of e-commerce owner, uh, e-commerce business owners uh, have hired someone online without ever meeting them. I'm talking VAs, I'm talking agencies, team members even, right? They've even hired team members uh, who probably they've never met in, in their life. So most of their team will operate online too, okay? So that's really the first thing that you need to understand about e-commerce. Now comparing that to local business. So first things first is traditional. Due to the physical nature of their business, many local business owners expect that human touch. In many cases, you're limited by location. Bear in mind, guys, uh, before I started e-commerce, the first month, month and a half uh, of my agency, my niche was actually gyms and uh, it, it wasn't a, a great period. The reason why that was uh, was simply because, look, as a gym owner, you might not have to meet the, uh, with them physically, right? But look, if you are in Germany or in France, there is very little chance that you're gonna be signing uh, a client in a gym in London, right? Why? Because they, they, you know, they're used to that physical nature. They, they want that human touch because literally their business is built on that human touch, that human element. So that's really the first thing. The second thing is team. So most of their team have a physical presence. They work with each other every single day. There's a big shock factor when hiring someone to do the job externally, right? They're not really used to it. So um, what they have to do is kind of like, well, like, you know, I haven't even met this person. And I'm, you know, I'm gonna put all this trust on this person. I haven't, I haven't even met them, right? So that might be, that might be a really big objection for a lot of local business owners. Um, and and it's it's an extra hurdle that you would have to jump, um, that you have to jump over. So that is that for outreach. The next thing is service delivery. So with e-commerce, the return is very clear. The KPI we're optimizing for is purchase. The main KPI is purchase conversion value. It is very clear how much money we've made them at the end of the month. And that is what, you know, one of the things that I absolutely love about e-commerce, the fact that at the end of the month, or even even during the whole uh, journey with, with us, they can clearly see how much we spent for them, how much we've made them, and what the return on ad spend is, right? And you guys can clearly see an example here. It's just an example, it's not my, uh, it's not one of our ad accounts. Uh, obviously we can share that for uh, confidentiality reasons, but uh, you can see, how much, uh, you know, how much these guys have made, so the uh, website uh, purchase conversion, and what that means as a, as a website uh, purchase ROAS, okay? 
Uh, so it's very, very clear and your value is very clear and there's really no doubt as to what value you are providing them. So that's really the first thing. The second thing is dying on your own sword. If you get them incredible results, you're responsible. If you get them very poor results, you're responsible. That gives you immense power and do not let that scare you off. Make that your superpower. You know, it's, it's funny when I, when I hear people say, oh, you know, I don't want to get into e-commerce simply because it's, it's harder to get results. Well, number one, you're not really going to, you're going to have a contractor that is going to be doing the service for you, right? And so that's great because this contractor is going to have experience in e-commerce and ideally they will have had uh, run ads for years at this point and have managed quite a lot of ads then. I actually like when it's harder because I know that number one, like that, you know, I, I know that that's going to scare a lot of people off. So there's, you know, the, the, the bar to entry is a bit higher. Uh, so I have less competition, but even if I have more competition, I actually like things that are harder because the return that you can get from them is usually better, right? And so there's there's a direct, direct correlation to uh, how hard something is and the return that you can get uh, from it. And, and that's the case with e-commerce. If you manage to crack e-commerce, which is really not as hard as people make it out to be, uh, once you have a pretty good team in place, um, then the returns are so much greater. And I'll talk about that in, in just a second, but the retainers are so much better. The fulfillment, the, the fact that you're working with established uh, business owners and that you're helping these brands grow online, like you have a very tangible and, and clear um, impact on their business growth. Like that is very fulfilling as an entrepreneur. And, and not only that, but it gives you transferable skills that you're definitely gonna be able to use later down the line if you wanna start your own business, which is probably gonna be down online, right? Uh, if, you, if you're trying to start any type of brand, it's probably gonna be an e-commerce brand. If you are uh, right now in, in this kind of age, um, you know, Gen Z generation or millennial, if you start a brand or a business that is not social media marketing agency, but it's more product based or, or just kind of, you know, as I said, a brand is probably be, it's probably going to be an e-commerce brand, uh, in which case this can serve you amazingly well, and it's going to set you up for the future. Um, so that's really the second thing. And the final thing is vital to success. For most e-commerce businesses, their main source of traffic and customers will be online advertising, not doing it well comes at a very large cost to the growth of the business. They're also constantly seeing other e-commerce brands build empires of, of social media marketing. Um, so this is massive. And it's, it's something that a lot of people completely neglect the fact that like, look, if they don't have Facebook ads in place, if you don't have Google ads or SEO or any type of uh, online advertising, it's going to be very hard for a, a, a new brand to get traction and really to get the ball rolling because that is really going to be the main source of traffic, especially as they start and they don't have a very strong organic audience. Um, and so, they have to implement, like th there's no way around it. If they want to grow their e-commerce uh, uh, business and, and brand, they're going to have to have some sort of uh, online advertising. And the great thing is the best avenue for that right now is Facebook ads. So uh, yeah, it's honestly uh, great news. Um, and and the, the final thing that I said there is they, you know, they're seeing constantly brands just kill it and, and build empires off the back of just this remarketing. I'm talking drunk elephant in the, in, in the beauty space, right? They sold for over 800 million. Um, and pretty much they built their uh, business on the back of social media marketing, some very clever influencer marketing, affiliate marketing, and uh, pay ads. Uh, and uh, for example, Gymshark, if they're in the fitness niche. Uh, so they're, they're seeing all these companies build huge empires on the back of just digital marketing, and they are slacking in this area and they know they need to fix this. So that's really what I would say on the e-commerce side of things on the, on the service delivery. Uh, when it comes to local business, Return is ambiguous, right? And this is the, the main thing about the, the, the actual service delivery for local business, the fact that the KPI is leads. Leads does not equal money, okay? Sure, they can be, uh, th there can be value attached to a lead, but the sale is not really under your control. Many local business agencies run into the problem down below. You know, the fact that like, you bring them all these leads, but then since, you know, since it's not really under your control, especially if you haven't really done your homework and you have told them, you know, what, what, what type of sales process to follow and, and how to make sure that they actually close these leads. What's going to happen is you're going to bring them all these leads. And if they're not able to close them, maybe because they are not really good at sales, they're going to come to you and, and they're going to blame you. They're going to blame the, the fact that the leads are not strong, right? And so I want to be in complete control over the return and, and the results that, that we get. them. I don't want to be uh, relying on their sales ability, right? And so you know, obviously, as long as you make clear that that you are that you only hold your yourself accountable to the to the the lead, it could be fine. But at the same time, you're still relying on them because if they don't see a return, if they can't close the lead, then they're not seeing a return on this, and so that's going to affect and impact the decision of do I keep this guy for uh, for much longer or do I not? If I can't close the leads that they're bringing me, why would I keep the service for longer? Right? I really want you guys to keep this in mind. And the final thing is they can get away without it. The reality is it's not as essential for a local business to implement online advertising. There's so many other ways that they can get traffic, for example, from street traffic, right? The fact that, you know, if they have a gym on a, or like a store on a high street, 
they are going to get street traffic. Okay. For example, elimination. What, what this means is, for example, let's just say that you have two gyms near your house. Uh, well, you know, it's going to depend on a bunch of factors. Like, for example, price point, like, for example, you know, does it look good? You know, is, is the is the, the vibe good, etc, etc. You're going to eliminate one and pick the other. The decision doesn't really come down to is this company running Facebook ads or are they not, right? The final thing among other um, factors and reasons is geographical limitation. For example, the, the gym that you pick is going to be determined by geographical limitation. You know, realistically, you're not really going to travel 10K or 20K to go to a gym that just looks better because you saw it on a, on a Facebook ads. Not only that, but when you run lead gen ads on Facebook for, for example, gyms, you are going to limit the reach based on a, a specific radius and uh, based on your ge uh, geography, right? And so that is what I want you guys to keep in mind. Now, I'm not saying, you know, look, look, if you're killing it with real estate, right, in the local business niche or real estate is just your passion, then absolutely go for, for that, right? Uh, but I just want you guys to keep this in mind. Um, if, for example, you're deciding between the two and, and you don't really know which one to pick and you don't really have a passion of yours, um, you know, but personally, I, I think that in this department, uh, e-commerce and, and the way I like to business, e-commerce just has that edge. Um, simply because, you know, the, the main thing is like the fact that you can actually be very clear with the value that you're bringing them uh, and you die on your own sword. The final thing is the lifestyle. And this is quite important for me, simply because look, if you're building a social media marketing agency, yes, it could be a passion project to an extent. It is for me, right? Because helping brands grow online truly ignites my passion. But at the same time, we get into social media marketing agency with the time, location, and financial freedom. And that is a really big uh, component of it. So yeah, let's get right into it and the lifestyle. And so the thing about e-commerce is that it truly uh, fuels my lifestyle. Okay. So the first thing is location freedom. I can reach out to any business that interests me, no matter where they're located. Right. And the fact that I'm not limited by location, it's honestly really nice to know that if I like a business, I'm not going to check where they're located because I can technically reach out to any business in the world. Right. As long as they're in my sub niche uh, and they meet a certain, you know, certain criteria that, that we look for in uh, dream clients, then I'm going to reach out to them and uh, potentially start a, a conversation and potentially uh, sign them on as clients. The second thing is higher retainers. So on average, e commerce businesses tend to have healthier profit margins around 30%, which allows them to invest more into revenue generating activities like online advertising. The fact that they have healthier mar margins uh, allows them to be a bit more you know, playful uh, and play around with you know, different online ad advertising avenues. For example, Google ads, Facebook ads, and a bunch of things, right? And so that's really the second thing. The third thing is referrals made easy. People congregate online. E-commerce uh, business owners tend to have many contacts and e-friends in the same space that they're happy to refer us to. And that this is pretty big, right? The fact that they have a lot of acquaintances in the space, and, and this doesn't have to be just geographically, right? It doesn't have to be, oh, you know, I, I know these people who are in the same neighborhood or the same you know city, uh, which usually is the case uh, for local businesses. Um, you know, they have a ton of friends globally, uh, simply because people congregate online. And if you have an e-commerce business that is all around uh, supplements or something like that, uh, you are probably going to have friends in the same space, right? Um, because you guys, you know, talk about the same stuff and, and you guys care about the same stuff. And so it's going to, you know, it's going to be so much easier for them to refer you to them uh, because their network is just much greater, right? Um, because, you know, they're tapping into social media and the power of, um, of uh, congregating online. So, that is the third thing. And the final thing is passion. So my passion is building and growing brands online. I literally get to work alongside established entrepreneurs. And at my agency, we are an integral part of their business growth. With local business, unfortunately, you don't feel that same sense of involvement and passion. And the reason why this is is because Facebook ads for a local business is just part of the way they get leads, right? For e-commerce business and the way at least we do it, where we have a 360 approach and we grow their brand online, we don't just take a look at a business growth from a Facebook, you know, a paid ads lens. We take a look at all the moving parts that come into play when going a business online. The way we do it, at least, there's just an immense sense of fulfillment because we truly feel like we are part of their business growth. Uh, and that is reflected in the work we do, in how, how we push for our clients, in how we work for our clients, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's really a rewarding feeling that the, the fact that you can have such a great impact on, on, on their growth. And not only that, but the fact that you get to work uh, alongside, you know, some of the clients that I have, like I use their products, right? And I use their products before they even became clients. And so it's, it's this really cool um, relationship where, you know, I really respect what they're doing. And not only that, but I get to literally work on their business, uh, a business that I truly looked up to. Um, 
and, and not only that, but also you get so many transferable skills. If you are looking to grow a, an e-commerce brand later down the line, when you have more, more of the resources and capital to invest into it, uh, because you've generated all, all those resources and capital with uh, SMMA, then you've literally worked with some of the biggest uh, e-commerce brands in the world. And you can apply all that you've done for them into your own e-commerce business and get incredible results. Uh, and so honestly, th th that's really why I love um, the e-commerce niche. The fact that, you know, you can, you, you literally get to, you literally get paid to work with clients who you absolutely love, who you uh, respect um, and, and products that you love. Um, and not only that, but you also, you know, build yourself up uh, for the future. So honestly, uh, it's, it's, it's quite incredible. And, and that's why it gets me so passionate. Now, guys, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did drop a big thumbs up, it really helps out a ton with the algorithm. YouTube honestly just loves when that thing turns blue and I'd really appreciate it. Also, I'll leave down below any comments, any questions you may have on this video. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's so much content coming out on entrepreneurship and a 360 approach to social media marketing agency with a specific focus on sales outreach and e-commerce so if you don't want to miss that go ahead and subscribe to my youtube channel there's so much content coming out as i said i'm putting out five videos a week and lastly if you haven't checked out my free private mentorship community the client closers honestly an incredible community full of like-minded people looking to scale their agency and level up in life if you don't want to miss that out go ahead and check out the link in the description and apply and as always guys hope everything is going well in your agency journey and i'll see you in the next one peace